Hello, first graders. Welcome back. This is week six, day two slash four. For today's lesson, you will need your thinking cap, your listening ears, a pencil, your crayons, and your modules three and four EL workbook. If you don't have these materials ready, just press pause, then press play when you're ready to learn. Hopefully you have your materials gathered now. Put your materials to the side because we're going to start with a self-care video. Today, we're going to think about how being home all the time is making us feel. Afterwards, we'll talk about the video. Get ready to watch Pin and Nettie. Hi, Pins. Hi, Nettie. How are the two of you doing? Not very good, huh? I understand. Things have been really... different these past few weeks, haven't they? And that's making you feel sad... and mad... and maybe even scared? Well, it's absolutely okay to feel sad and mad and scared. It's okay to feel however you feel. Of course it is, especially after what we've all been through these past few weeks. It's not easy to stay home all the time, is it? But we're together and we're safe. Always remember that. When I've been feeling sad or scared, I say that over and over to myself. We are together and we are safe. 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 And taking big deep breaths helps me feel better too. Do you want to try it with me? Great! First, breathe in like you're filling up a balloon and then let it out slowly. Ready? Okay, let's go. We are together and we are safe. <sighs> we are together and we are safe. <sighs> Great stuff, Pins and Nettie. Do you feel better now? Good. Me too. And you know, even though we have to stay at home, we can still have fun. So, what shall we do? Oh, a dance party. Great idea, Nettie. What do you think, Pins? Excellent. I love a good dance party. We're together and we're safe. 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 Repeat after me. We are together and we are safe. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Is there a time when you could say this message to yourself and use this deep breathing at home or at school? Mm hmm I think so too. 
Sometimes when we're at home for long periods of time, we need to have a little bit of self-care by repeating that message, we are together and we are safe, accompanied by deep breathing, we can show ourselves some self-care. Now that our brains are warmed up and we've taken some mindful moments to reflect on self-care, we can get started with our lesson. Today's learning target says, I can collaborate with my classmates to discuss a sentence from the text, Beaks. Let's read that again. I can collaborate with my classmates to discuss a sentence from the text, Beaks. Of course, on this lesson, you'll have me instead of your classmates, but we'll collaborate together to discuss a sentence from the text, Beaks. Our sentence comes from this page of our text. Take a moment to closely observe the illustration, then we'll read it together. The text on the page is small, but try to follow along with me. A swishing beak. Spoonbills. Spoonbills have flat, paddle-shaped beaks. To find food, Spoonbills wade into shallow water and swish their open beaks back and forth. At the same time, the birds use their feet to stir up mud and the animals in it. Like skimmers, they hunt by touch, snapping their beaks closed on insect, fish, and other prey. Hunting in groups probably helps Spoonbills stir up more food than hunting alone. Can you pretend like you are a spoonbill? Use your arms to make a flat paddle-shaped beak. Good, swish your beak back and forth, opening and closing your beak, stirring up the mud. Good job. Today's sentence that we'll be diving into is underlined in red. Our sentence says, to find food, spoonbills wade into shallow water and swish their open beaks back and forth. Read that sentence with me. To find food, spoonbills wade into shallow water and swish their open beaks back and forth. I've taken our sentence and I've chopped it up. I have the picture of the text at the top. Let's take a language dive looking at the different chunks of this sentence and thinking about the meaning. When we look at the entire sentence, what is the sentence about? Mm -hmm. This sentence is about how spoonbills use their beaks to find food. And remind me, how would this connect to our unit guiding question? Our question being, how do birds use their beaks to survive? Yes, the spoonbill is using its beak to survive by using their beak as a tool to find food. The first chunk that we're going to closely look at is the chunk that says spoonbills. Put your eyes on that bold box word, spoonbills. Focus on that chunk. What animal is this sentence about? Spoonbills. And, hmm, what is it that spoonbills do? Which chunk tells you what the spoonbill does? What about this chunk? Read that to me. Mm 
Yes, the spoonbill is wading into shallow water, and that means that they're walking slowly through an open area of water. And that word shallow, that starts with the sh digraph, that means that the water is not very deep. Can you stand up and act like you're wading through or walking through shallow water like a spoonbill? Good job. Let's look at the next chunk. And swish their open beaks back and forth. So while these spoonbills are wading into that shallow water, what is it that they're doing? Mm-hmm. That's right, they're moving their beaks with a swish which means a soft sweeping or brushing sound and motion. So slowly wading those beaks back and forth, stirring up that mud. Hmm, but why? Why are they stirring up the mud in that shallow water, swishing their beaks? What are they trying to do? Mm-hmm. They're trying to find food. Good. When we're looking at this sentence, the author tried to give us a word to describe the spoonbill's beak. Let's look at the first chunk. To find food. Does that describe the spoonbill's beak? Mm, no. What about the next chunk? Spoonbills. Does that describe the beak? Mm, no. Nope. Wade into shallow water. Does that describe the beak? No. Look at the last one and swish their open beaks back and forth. Hmm. And swish their what kind of beaks? That's right, they're open beaks. To swish their open beaks back and forth. Good. Now we could think of some stronger adjectives that we might put instead of the word open. For example, I could put and swish their gaping beaks back and forth or and swish their wide open beaks back and forth. That word open is describing the beak. And of course, we know that they're swishing their open beaks back and forth to help them find food. That chunk that says to find food is at the beginning of the sentence. But we could also put that chunk at the end of the sentence, couldn't we? Let's pretend that that chunk is at the end. Then our sentence would sound like this. Spoonbills wade into shallow water and swish their open beaks back and forth to find food. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Did that make sense? It sure did. So when we look at these sentences and we dive into the meaning and the structure, we can see how the sentences could even be moved around. Let's read the sentence start to finish one more time before we move on. Ready? To find food, spoonbills wade into shallow water and swish their open beaks back and forth. Good job. Thank you for diving into that sentence with me. Our target for today said I can collaborate with my teacher to discuss a sentence from the text, Beaks. You were able to collaborate with me by thinking through each of those chunks of the sentence. And our sentence came from the text, Beaks. Thank you for joining me today and diving into that sentence to discover its meaning. I'll see you next time. Bye friends. 